we are given a triangle ABC where BC is 8 centimeters and AC is 10 centimeters. Also, there is a point D on AB such that D is the midpoint of AB. And a line originates from D which intersects AC at E such that this DE is parallel to BC. Now, we need to find the length of AE and DE. Looking at what all is given to us, let us see. We are given one midpoint and one set of parallel lines. Aren't these the conditions which we kind of saw in midpoint theorem? So, in order to find the length of AE, we need to look at the converse of midpoint theorem. The converse theorem states that the line drawn through the midpoint of one side of a triangle parallel to another side bisects the third side. So, it is saying that E bisects AC. If E bisects AC, that means AE is equal to AC or AE is half of AC. Now, AC is given 10 centimeters. So, AE is half of 10 centimeters, that is 5 centimeters. Also, according to this converse theorem, we have established that E is also the midpoint now. So, if there are two midpoints, D and E of AB and AC respectively, according to the midpoint theorem, DE is half of BC as well. So, DE will be half of 8 centimeters, that is 4 centimeters, right? Let us also look at how can we prove it mathematically. Now, we need to find the difference where to apply the converse theorem. See, in the midpoint theorem, we are given two midpoints. But whenever we are given one midpoint and a line originating from that midpoint such that it is parallel to one side of the triangle, then we need to apply this converse theorem. So, over here, we are given that D is the midpoint and a line from D, which is DE, such that DE is parallel to BC. Okay, and we need to prove that E is also the midpoint of AC. So, let us start. We can use the same concept that we used while we were proving midpoint theorem of congruency of triangles. So, we will be making a triangle over here. For that, we need to draw one line over here. So, we'll just draw a line CM which is parallel to AB, okay? And we'll extend DE as well, such that it intersects CM at F. Now, let us look at this quadrilateral, D, B, C, F. DE is parallel to BC. This is something given to us. And since we just extended this line, that means DF is also parallel to BC. And DB is parallel to FC. We constructed it that way, right? So, this quadrilateral is actually a parallelogram because in a quadrilateral, if two pairs of opposite sides are parallel, it becomes a parallelogram. Now, if DB, CF is a parallelogram, that means DB is equal to CF, the opposite sides of a parallelogram, right? But DB is already equal to AD since D is the midpoint. So, this gives us AD equal to CF. Now, let us look at these two triangles carefully. Triangle ADE and triangle CFE. The orange and the pink color triangle. In this, CM is parallel to AB. Right? And AC is the transversal. We again have a Z shape. So, this angle A is equal to angle C because they make a pair of alternate interior angles. Also, this angle DEA in the orange triangle is equal to CEF in the pink triangle because these are vertically opposite angles. And AD is already equal to CF. We just proved it, right? So, these two triangles are congruent by AAS criteria. Angle, angle, side. So, by that, we can just say that AE, AE is equal to CE by CPCT. AE is equal to CE by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. That means E is the midpoint of AC.